Do you know how to flip it? Do you know how to take what God does let you have to establish in your life what God really wants you to have? Do you know how to take what God lets you possess to possess what you're really supposed to possess? How the Holy Spirit does is he'll give you just what you need to try you, to test you. The Holy Spirit always tests you like that. He'll give you just what you need. Just enough food, just enough clothes, just enough favor with someone. Sometimes you may be living in someone's house, which is most time what the Holy Spirit prescribes. When you're walking with God, he'll pick for you to live with somebody. There's a reason why he picks that, because he's giving you just enough. What I'm saying to you is that you wonder, why did God not give me my own apartment? Why did he let me live with my friend or, or, or he picked me here? Because he gave you just enough. And the Lord, he knows how to hide the climax of what you're really going to possess in a situation that you're currently in. And that situation seems limited. But do you know how to flip it? Do you know how to take what God is allowing you to possess and sow it to receive what you're supposed to possess? I had to learn how to flip it, how to sow. And I had to learn the wisdom of sowing when it seems like what I have will protect me and I urgently need the protection. And God has to expand your mind because he has to show you, all right, where you're at. Do you want to stay there? If you do want to stay there, then plant yourself in making financial decisions to stay there. But if you want a supernatural catapulting of the spirit, if you want a supernatural climb, a supernatural ascension financially, do you know how to flip it? Do you know how to take what you have and release it into God's multiplying factory. Because the Lord has a multiplying factory. That's how he makes you rich. That's how he makes you wealthy. Multi-millionaire status, billionaire status, trillionaire status is all in the multiplying factory. Now, the word of God talked about how King Jesus will multiply what they gave him. Hebrews 13, 8 says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the multiplying mantle of King Jesus was reserved for those that would take him up on his challenge to sow. For people that would be comfortable and say, I'll go my own route, I'll make it my own way, I'll work five jobs to get there. The Bible say labor not to be rich in Proverbs. So obviously to be rich is not through labor and God. To be rich is through wisdom. And wisdom is instructions. There's always an instruction that God will give to you that has gold in it, silver in it, prosperity in it. How do I prepare to flip it? Proverbs 28 verse 1 says the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so if you study a lion, a lion fiercely looks for its food, fiercely looks for what belongs to that lion. A lion is always successful in getting provision. So people of God, if you look at the nature, a lion is fierce. Uh, a lion has the ability to tear its enemy to pieces. Now, saints, look what it said, who is bold as a lion, the righteous. 
Who are the righteous? Those that are sowing. Those that are sowing are righteous. The righteousness of God is the ability to honor God. The righteousness of God is the ability to honor God. So to be righteous means that you're, you're a sower. You honor your God. But it said that you are bold as a lion. So while you're sowing, you have a mindset. You have the ability of the lion to take a hold of provision. Tear the enemy to pieces with your seed. Destroy every atmospheric principality, power, ruler of the darkness of this age, spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places that will even attempt to hold up what you're supposed to enjoy on earth. Because the same way an angel of God holds events to release them to you so that you can be blessed, the same way demons, they hold events to release it to you or, or they hold events to stop the blessing from occurring. They try to block events. They try to hinder events. The same way angels release events, the same way demons postpone and delay events. But the Lord created the seed. He created the seed so that you could penetrate your path with prosperity and blessing. He created the seed so that you could saturate your own self with the oil for wealth, the spirit of wealth, the anointing of wealth, the power for wealth. Now, a lot of people have not gotten a revelation of wealth power, but wealth power means that God is going to move heavily while refusing to be resisted. To perform abundance in your life. Did you catch what I just said? It means God is going to move heavily, strongly, violently, refusing to be resisted while performing abundance in your life. Giving you what you enjoy in excessive quantities or high amounts in large dispensations, large, uh, large sizes. He's going to give you what you enjoy in a big package so that you can enjoy it, then enjoy it some more. I want to give you this definition of wealth that is continual enjoyment. If you're taking notes, write that down. Wealth is continual enjoyment. While you're sowing into your divine leader, you're agreeing with God for continual enjoyment. You're telling the Lord, let your will be done for me to enjoy my life on earth. When you sow into your apostle, because your apostle, your prophet is blessed, they're of the spirit, they're of the government of God. That's what you come in covenant with, the government of God, the economy of God. The presence, the power, the glory, the fire, the favor of the Holy Spirit now sits on you. There is a portal that opens up when you're sowing. When you're listening to God with your finances, you have a light, a glory light over you for money cometh, for supernatural money moving, for the wealth of God. You have that cloud over you. And not only is that portal over you, but you have access to angels and ministering spirits now that will take your seed sown, whether it be past or present. And they will take your seed sown and they will lift it up to the father. And as you decree things, the father will have knowledge of what you decreed over your seed. And the father is moved by sowing. Sowing touches his heart. So when you're sowing and that seed touches his heart and he knows what you attach to that seed, he brings it to you because of how you make him feel. Always remember this, that God releases wealth determined on how you make him feel in your obedience, in your submission, in your finances. The Lord is touched by how you spend money. If you ever want to get a reaction from God, pick money and pit it somewhere. You activate God's reaction either for good or for bad. 
Saints, the sowing that God invented was for mankind to get a direct link to his heart, to touch the soul of God with the seed. That's why God, he introduces it to Adam because he's telling Adam, Adam, this is the only way you're going to make me feel good. I want you to learn how to sow. I want you to learn how to listen to me with what I give you because this is how you're going to preserve your relationship with me. Secure the gear. Do you know how to flip it? When you learn sowing, you learn friendship with God. If you take a note, write that down. When you learn sowing, you learn friendship with God. When you learn sowing, you learn friendship with God. You learn intimacy. You learn how to make love to the Father. Sowing is the sex life of God. It impregnates you. It's the same way like the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. And she was impregnated with Jesus. The same way the Holy Spirit comes upon you when you're sowing and you get impregnated with Jesus. Abundant life. You get impregnated with Jesus. Do you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that through his poverty you was made rich? That riches, you become impregnated with it. Sowing is how you make love to God. He takes the seed as a gesture of flirtation. The Lord knows when somebody wants his attention because their sowing account will cry out for him. The seed is how you scream to the father. A seed is a scream. A seed has a volume. Man, I never heard this before. I never heard this before. I never heard this before. The seed is a scream. The seed has a volume. And a bountiful sower is screaming louder. That's why God had to come down and ask Solomon, what shall I give you? God couldn't even wait six months. He couldn't even wait two years. He couldn't wait three weeks. He had to come immediately. Because the flirtation of Solomon's seed was so strong. It captures God's attention. It takes him into instant ec ecstasy and pleasure, and satisfaction. And when God gives you wealth, it's because you have given him pleasure in your obedience, your submission, your sowing. When you touch him, you touch his soul, he touch your soul. See, his soul is where his desires is. Your soul is where your desires are. That's why he give you the desires of your heart because you have given him the desire of his heart to find a true worshiper in the earth. The father seeketh one that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You worship him in spirit and in truth because you learn to give him everything that he gives you. You learn to give it back to him the way that he wants it back. Oh, hallelujah. Saints, if you look at it, sowing is not just about money, but it's about every single part of your being. It's about the fact that you give him everything that he gave to you. He gave you those limbs. He gave you that body. He gave you those eyes, those ears, that mouth, those, that nose. Those. He gave you everything that you have. The thing that you do is sow it back to him. And that's why he releases a fresh economic stimulus package to empower you with wealth, empower you with money. But you have to learn. And will you ever be quickened by do you know how 